Um, we were painting our little cabin and doing some things and all of a sudden Mark's phone rang and it was Nicole, um, Brady's girlfriend, and um, he asked if I had heard from from Brady because my phone had been inside and I didn't hear it ringing. And something in my gut told me that something was not right. They put me on hold and then they transferred me. And then they put me on hold again and they transferred me again. And I knew then that something was wrong. And um, the third person that I talked to, all they could tell me was that he was in an accident and um, I needed to get to St. Cloud as fast as I could because he'd been airlifted. I could not get there fast enough. I wanted to get there before they took him into surgery. But the neurosurgeon and his nurse came in and told us that uh, wanted to know who who was responsible to make decisions for Brady. If he couldn't make them on his own, and uh, they said I was, and my husband and I, and. Uh, he just told us that we might be making the hardest decision of our life because the trauma that Brady went through um, was horrible. So when Brady came up from the OR, he was in very critical condition. Uh, he was showing very minimal signs of neurological function. He was not responding to us at all. So I called Life Source within, um, within an hour and a half of him coming to the floor and, and me assessing, uh, assessing his neurological status. They didn't think that anything other than we would be a, we would be planning a funeral. And all we did is we just started to pray. We had the clergy come in. There was I didn't know what else. There was nothing else we could do. That was the only thing that we had was to pray and to continue praying. And um, we stayed there and we, we slept there and we never left. Um, I, I honestly believe that from the very beginning, he felt us. He heard me saying to him, don't give up. Don't give up, keep fighting. I need you back, I need you back. I would always give him a kiss and the one day he turned and looked at me and he puckered up for a kiss for, to give back to me. On the seventh day of Brady being in the ICU, we were walking in the hallway and we passed the neurosurgeon and he told me that Brady was a miracle and he was doing great and asked if whoever is praying for Brady, can you please have them pray for me because it's working, it's working. Within 10 days, Brady was awake, he was following commands, which is just unheard of. I've never seen that within my six years of nursing practice. Uh, Brady, with his critical illness, should have passed away within that first night. We can't stop. We can't stop until he's back to getting near 100%. Don't know if we'll get to 100%. And Maybe it'll be 100% in a new normal, but uh, we're gonna keep pushing and keep going. Faith and prayer, that's, uh, that's what got us through. That and a lot of friends and everyone else, family, supportive and praying. We have two, Brady's got two grandfathers up there and I think they're two in a little bit of tugging and pulling um, for him also. and keeping a close eye over him, but uh, he definitely is a miracle and he definitely has some angels watching over him, that's for sure.